deal with genetics. It's been a long, a little bit of a long time. Um, let's just read the first part of this and identify like how I know what type of inheritance pattern is going on. So this is still, there's a lot going on in this question. It's just not just a genetics question. It's like a hormone question and a genetics question and a gene expression question all mixed together. But we have gibberellin. It's a plant hormone that causes plants to get taller because their stems elongate. And you have this enzyme that catalyzes the reaction that converts a precursor molecule into its active form. So you guys see that a lot, like precursor molecules to its active form. If you have a mutation in this gene, it results in a short plant phenotype. So around here, if I'm trying to figure out like what's going on, I have the gene for this GA3H. So it's, I have one gene that'll give me like a tall phenotype because it gives me stem elongation. So one allele will give me something that's tall, and the other allele will give me a phenotype that's short. But they're, this, they're this, still the same gene, they're just different versions of it, and those are my alleles. It says here that we have a pure breeding tall plant. What does it mean to be pure breeding? Homozygous, good. So pure reading means you are homozygous. So I have some plant that is homozygous tall, and it's crossed with a pure breeding short plant, and all the F1 are tall. So that means, here's my P generation, that's my parent or my true breeding generation. And I have one that's tall, crossed with one that is short, and I get in my F1, they're all tall. What's the genotype always of my F1? Heterozygote. Because my F1 is my hybrid, and I know that my genotype is always heterozygous. And since this is tall, what's dominant? Yeah. So now my tall allele I know is dominant to my short allele. So... Here are my genotypes. The next thing it says is when I cross two F1s with each other, I get 75% of the plants in the F2 generation that are tall and 25% that are short. So an F2 generation comes when I cross two F1s. So I cross another F1. And my F2 will give me 75% that are tall, and then here's my 25% that are short. So I know that this is showing a my inheritance pattern shows complete dominance. There's, doesn't, my F1 does not show both tall and short, and it doesn't have like a medium size characteristic. Yes, so if I had an F1 and its phenotype was like, like a medium height, that would mean that it's like a blend of both. It's not tall, it's not short, it's in between. So that inheritance pattern would be incomplete dominance. If I get a, like, looks like a blending. What happens when I get co-dominance? In my F1. Yeah, usually I use the cows, or sometimes we'll talk about like ABO blood typing. Okay. 
So if, if we're going with cows, and I have like a black cow crossed with a white cow in incomplete dominance, I would get a brown or a gray, let's say. Like it's kind of in between black and white. But if it was co-dominance, and I did a black and white, and I did my cross, I would get a little cow, and he would be black and white. And he might have black and white spots. So I see both phenotypes. They're not blended like they would be with incomplete dominance, but they're both shown. And that's like with ABO blood typing. If you have this genotype, you have A blood receptors and B blood receptors. You have both. You don't just have A blood, you have A, B blood. So, I know that this is showing complete dominance. And then here I can come down to A. So, my wild type allele codes an enzyme with alanine, which is nonpolar at position 229. The mutant allele encodes the enzyme with a different amino acid, so its primary structure is different at the same position. So describe the effects of mutation on the enzyme and provide a reason to show how this mutation results in a shorter plant phenotype in the homozygous recessive plant. So let's just describe the effect of mutation on the enzyme. We're going to look back at the same theme again of structure is related to function. So what changed in the structure of the enzyme? Yeah, it said right here that we went from alanine to tyranine. So my primary structure of amino acids changed and I went from a nonpolar amino acid to a polar one. That R group on the amino acid has different properties. So, describe the effect of mutation on the enzyme. Well, the enzyme's shape is different because of the change to the primary structure in the amino acid sequence. So, the enzyme that was responsible for making this plant hormone to make tall plants doesn't work any longer because its structure changed. So I wrote it out in like a sentence format. Change in amino acids from alanine to thyronine results in a change in the enzyme's structure. This interferes with the function of the enzyme and it can no longer form the active form of gibberellin. And the lack of the gibberellin hormone results in shorter stems or shorter plants. So you change the shape of the enzyme, the enzyme can no longer function and make the hormone. That's the first part of A. Provide reasoning to support how this mutation results in a short plant phenotype in recessive plants. I did that already in my big answer because I said how it could no longer make gibberellin. Looking at B, we're going to use a codon chart and predict the change in the codon sequence that resulted from the substitution of alanine for thyronine. So I'm going to look at alanine, and that's in this box right here. We went from alanine, there's my second box right here. What probably changed? And it asked for the change in the codon sequence. So it's asking me for the change on the messenger RNA, because messenger RNA has the codons. What probably changed? Yeah, so these all start with G, these all start with A, so we changed, 
from G to A in the first position of that codon. If they asked me for the DNA mutation, because a change to a messenger RNA usually does not affect the whole organism. That might affect one cell for a short amount of time, because messenger RNA doesn't last forever. But a change to DNA is permanent and affects the whole organism. So the main the mutation is probably on DNA. What would change in the DNA? My DNA template strand would have been what? My messenger RNA went from G to A, so my DNA would go from C to T. Yeah. Because it asked for the change in the codon sequence, you were fine saying the change went from G to A in the first position of the codon. But the rubric also has, if some students went and talked about the DNA mutation, they took that as well. But since it said codon, you're fine with just talking about the messenger RNA. But if it asked you, like using the codon chart protect the, the DNA mutation, you need to go to DNA and don't stay at messenger RNA. Okay, the last one is a little tricky. So we know that the homozygous genotype and the heterozygous genotype both give me the tall phenotype. They want to know how an individual with only one copy can still have the same phenotype as someone with two copies. And remember, whenever we have a genotype, you have two chromosomes. One that you got from your dad, so a paternal chromosome, and the other one that you got from your mom. And that gene is in the same location, or the gene loci is the same on those chromosomes. This, let's say this one right here, this would produce a functioning enzyme when it goes through transcription and translation. This allele produces a non-functioning enzyme because the shape of the enzyme has been compromised because of the change to the primary structure of amino acids. So if I'm looking for Looking at this, if all the enzymes that's made, all of the enzyme that's made here functions. Here, about half of the enzyme functions. But for this, there must be enough active enzyme to make adequate amounts of that hormone to have a tall plant. Because sometimes 50% is enough. Does this one make sense? So even if you're heterozygous, you're still making some functioning enzyme, but just not as much as the homozygous. You want to do a quick genetics problem before you guys go? Um, 